Um, hello, so today we are going to take a look at um, class delegation in Kotlin or class delegates. Um, so first of all, just say, see what delegation is. So delegation is a pattern where an object handles a request by delegating to another object. That other object is of course the delegate. And the delegate is responsible for handling the request on behalf of the original um, object. And so we'll see an example in a minute with this. Um, what Kotlin does is it makes this type of pattern delegation easier to use by providing support for class delegates, uh, property delegates, and also um, Kotlin Thunder Library has also some built-in delegates that can be used. And so let's take a look at a simple example here. Um, we just have a base interface that has a function print. And then we have an implementation of that interface. And so it gets passed an integer value. And then it just overrides the base to just print that integer value. So very simple. And then we have this derived class that gets passed this um, parameter, which is an um, at, uh, of type the, the base interface. And then we say that this derived class implements this interface but the the new thing here is that it implements it by b um, and b is just this parameter passed so whatever parameter passed here this derived class will implement the base in interface using it right and so this part here is the delegation part so we are saying that derived will support the functions of the interface base but it will support them by delegating them to this, the instance of this base that is passed to it as a parameter. And so, if we initialize the base implementation with just a value 10 and pass that as the parameter to drive it and call print, it, will, it should call print this print implementation. It will just delegate the implementation to, um, to this base implementation um, print implementation. So let me run this. So you can see it prints 10. So it called this. If we remove this, we will have a problem because we will need to implement print, right? But by saying that we delegated to B, um, it will just forward the call to the delegate here, which is in this case the, the base delegate, which is a base implementation instance. So this is the main idea. Um, now, one thing we can think of, okay, why do we need to use this? Um, so often we need to add behavior to another class um, even if that other class wasn't designed to be extended um, a commonly used way to do this is usually called the decorator pattern and essentially all that is is just that a new we create a new class and we implement some interface like we did here um, and the original class and we store an instance of the original class as a field so let's say here we store, for example, um, the parameter here is stored as a property. We can store it as a field, an instance of it, of the delegate. And then methods in which the behavior um, doesn't need to be modified are just, uh, are just forwarded to that original class instance that we have as a field. So here, since we don't want to modify print, we just it will just be forwarded to this um, class instance. So this is the use case. Now, without the by keyword um, that Kotlin provides, um, let's see what it looks like without that, just to see why this keyword, um, this class delegate um, that is supported by Kotlin is, is useful. So here we have an example um, of delegation accomplished by hand, where um, we just have a collection, um, our own collection class, that extend that implements the collection interface, so it needs all the collection interface functions, um, and then we have what I said here, which is um, the original class and storing the instance of the original class as a field. So we store the instance of the original class as a field. The original class is an array list, and so just an inner list. So our collection here just wraps an inner, an inner list. So we have that as an instance as a field. And then we delegate all the collection functions to that inner list. So without Kotlin support uh, of class delegate, we will have to override every function, right? And for every one of them, 
take this inner list and call the function on it. So call size is empty, contains iterator. So you can see we are just calling the same function. We are just forwarding them to, uh, to this inner list instance, uh, to this inner list field, right? And so you can see it's a lot of boilerplate. Um, this one is even shorter, maybe with some other um, class interfaces or classes, the list can be longer. Um, and yeah, it's nothing, it's just recalling the same function. So what Kotlin does is it helps with, with this boilerplate by adding first class support for delegation. So whenever you are implementing an interface, you can just say that you are delegating the implementation of the interface to another object using this by keyword. And that way, the compiler will generate this type of functions for you. You don't need to write them by hand, since they are very straightforward. The compiler can just do that. Do that. Do that. So if we take the same example, let me just rename this to match it. So if you take the same example here and you do it using Kotlin, so I should say my delegation two, and do it using Kotlin instead, um, then you can see here we just have the inner list as a property here, pass it to the um, to the constructor here. So this is the same inner list that we have here. And we implement the same collection. However, we say that we are implementing it by this inner list um, field. So you can, that way, we can call the exact same function and the co compiler will generate this for us. So these two will accomplish the same thing, except this one has a lot less boilerplate code because of the by keyword um, that supports class delegate that adds support for class delegate that Kotlin provides. Um, and so this way, actually, you can override only the methods you want to change the behavior for. So let's say for inner list here, we, did, we didn't want to change the behavior for any of the functions. But if you do, if you need, let's say, to change only contains, the implementation of contains to maybe print or do something, um, then you can um, you can all you can override only the methods you want to change the behavior for and just leave out the other methods or the other functions for which it's enough to just use the default implementation of the delegate. And so I have an example that demonstrate that here. So we have a set that so let's say we want a set class um, that counts the elements that are attempted to be added to it. So whenever we attempt to add the number, we we um, we count it or to add a value we count it. Um, uh, as you know, a set, if the element already exists, it doesn't add it. And so we want to just count all the attempts, so if including those that are attempted to be added, but we found a duplicate already exists, and so we don't add it. Um, so we override the add here, so I have here the count set um, the, uh, to, to accomplish that, and it's passed as a uh, parameter here, the inner, inner set, which is any implementation of mutable collection which supports add, right, and remove, and supports add all, right, and the implementation of that one here I have is just a hash set, right, and so what I'm saying here is that this one is a mutable collection, so it, we can add to it and we can remove, but it, it delegates all the functions here to the inner set, so it delegates them to this, this one here. And so you can see, if we take a look at the mutable collection here, um, and split vertically here, um, mutable collection supports iterator, add, remove, add all, um, remove all, retain all, and clear. Here, all I want is to count the elements that are attempted to be added. So I only need to override add and add all functions. Only the functions that add. I don't need to override remove and um, and iterator and remove all and these two and so those that are I don't need to override will just be forwarded to automatically because we use this by inner, inner, by inner set right and so we override only the two that we want which are add and add all and then we have just this variable to count how many added attempts so here we attempted to add one element because it's add so increment by one add all we attempt to it um, to add all these elements, so we add the size of these, and we delegate after that to inner set for the real function call that adds to the to the set, and then we emit the other ones, and they will just the calls to those will just be forwarded. So here, let's use that one. So just to find a count set, right here, and let's just come in this other main function.
um, yep, so we initialize our count set and then we add this list. So it has two duplicates, you can see two duplicates numbers, one and two. So we can see here we can call size, fine, this was just forwarded to the um, delegate, which is the hatch set, and we'll just call that implementation. Um, but add all here will call add all will call this, and it will record what we attempted to add, right? So if we run this, so we are just printing how many elements were attempted to be added. You can see here we are attempting five, and what is the current um, set size? And so. We added five. We attempted to add five elements to the set, right here, and the set size is two. Is only two because only two distinct numbers, right? And so we can also. So this tells you that we did call this because the added count got incremented. So we did call the override override function. So we can do something similar with add here to add just maybe uh, let's add three. So the size should be three now. Okay, the size three and we have to, six elements were attempted to be added, right? Um, so you can see here, this is pretty useful. We only need to override what we need and the rest will just be forwarded to the delegate. Um, another thing we can take a look at, another example here is using multiple delegates for, this, for one class. So I have here this interface wizard. So let's say we are just writing this um, game um, that has wizards, characters, pilot, that can fly, so typical game. Um, so we have an interface wizard with a function just do magic, and then we have pilot with a function fly, and then we have character, which accepts two parameters, pilot and um, a wizard, uh, so, right? So what we are saying here is that it implements the pilot interface by using this parameter pilot, this property pilot, and it implements wizard by using wizard here. So we are, use, we are delegating to two classes here. We are delegating to pilot and to wizard. And character implements these two interfaces using the delegate, so it doesn't need to implement anything. You can notice if I remove this um, and just say, sorry, if I remove the by keyword here, you can see this asks us to this. Um, we have an error now that says um, that it doesn't implement do magic. But if we say that we are using just wizard, um, it will implement it. If wizard is a different type, right, then the then this won't work, right? Because it says there is a mismatch of the type. We are required to provide a wizard here. Okay, so then how does this work now? So let's come in this other main function. So now let's say we create an instance of wizard. So just prints that it's doing magic, and then instance of file that pr just prints flying, so these are just placeholders. And then we create a character um, that gets passed both a pilot and a wizard. And so the character now can call these functions, the functions of the pilot and the wizard interfaces. But what will happen is the compiler will generate for, ca for the, this character class all the methods of pilot and wizard and make them just forward calls um, to this pilot and this wizard instances. So now if we call fly and do magic, it will just, for fly, it will just call, um, okay, let me just reverse the order. So for do magic, it will just call this one, and for fly, it will just call this one. So let's run this. And we can see um, these two are getting called um, because um, we just forward to the delegate. Um, yeah.